Hey everyone, I hope you're all having a good week. It's Tuesday? Tuesday. And it's been about six days since I posted a video and I'm not going to talk about it a lot today. I actually want to make a little short movie about this because I know a lot of you can relate, but do you ever get that moment where you don't feel like doing something and because of your emotion, so the fact that you don't feel like doing something, it kills your productivity. So sometimes you just don't feel like reading a book and then oh crap, it's been uh, two weeks that you've re since you've read a book or done your homework or you know you, you procrastinate because you don't feel like doing something. And it's something lately I've run into a lot more than when I was programming full time. Anyways, it's not something I want to talk about in today's video, but it's something that's been affecting me. And if any of you can relate, let me know because it's... Uh, let me know if you got any uh, advice for those who work from home because uh, it's a lot easier to get distracted, you know, having a dog running around, and food, and just every distraction in the world at home. It gets sometimes a little hard for me to control myself and make sure that I'm on track and making my daily videos, which I haven't done in a long time. Anyways, for those who are new, I just wanted to let you know that when I started programming, I think I did about three months of learning from home. I made my own applications, I started the very basic languages, and I didn't do any courses other than the Udemy intro to JavaScript. After those three months of learning from home, I took a boot camp called Lighthouse Labs. I made a whole video about it. I'm gonna post a link in the top corner and you can go watch it. It's like a 17 minute video and I break down everything. I explain to you the bullshit of boot camps, why they're not worth it and why they are worth it. Anyways, that's a whole video in itself. After six months of learning from the first day I ever wrote code, I got a job. Now, a lot of people were like, wait, were you programming before? Did you have any previous experience? No. Six months from the day I started programming, about six months, I got a job. And I'm not trying to make this a brag or anything, but I think I found a good strategy and a good little system that helped me learn very quick and very efficiently. In the video, I want to talk about two things. I want to talk about what you need to get hired and the strategy I use. If you don't want to watch the first half, I'm going to put a timestamp below in the description and you can go and skip to the other half, but I recommend watching the whole thing. Of course I do, it's my video. One thing I should note is that when I was learning in that six months, I was doing every single day. I did not take one day off for 10 hours a day, seven days a week, literally every breathing moment. If I had a chance while I'm in the bathroom, on the bus, on the train, whatever I'm doing, I was programming on my phone, on my laptop, everywhere. So for those of you who have a bit more responsibilities like kids and animals and just things that you can't ignore for six months at a time, then yeah, it's not going to take you six months. It's gonna, it might take you a year. Like everything I say in my videos, apply it to your experience. I'm applying it to mine and I'm telling you about my experience. So what you need for a job, everything you need to know for a job. First thing we need to decide is, are you going for a corporate or a startup job? Because these two are very different. In a startup job, you might be doing things that you've never even thought you'd do, things unrelated to programming. Sometimes they're like, hey, Mike, we need some, we need a logo redesign and you, you're a programmer, but can you use Photoshop? And I'd be like, ah, I used it once. All right, go do it. You know, in startups, it's like whoever, whatever, just get shit done. In a corporate company, things are a bit more relaxed and there's a bit more of a diverse group of people who do different things. Like you're gonna have your DevOps team. You're gonna have your back-end team, you're gonna have your front-end team, your, uh, you know, all these teams that do different things. You're gonna have your front-end React and front-end Angular and it's just gonna be like everyone specifies in something. So that's something to note when you're applying for jobs. Always check what they want in their requirements and then cater your content to that. Okay, so this might sound a bit generic, but you do need to know JavaScript and HTML and CSS to pretty much go anywhere in the web development side. For those who don't want to go to web development, you can pretty much switch out all the front end for stuff like Python and all that. But I'm going to try and apply this to web development just because I know most of my viewers are going for those type of jobs. If you're not going for those type of jobs, comment below and I can give you a little list of what you would need for that job. One thing I want to go over, because I keep seeing this and I did a video with Josh where we reviewed portfolios and some people were saying they mastered JavaScript or CSS or HTML and it just, it's ridiculous. And it's not ridiculous because they probably didn't do it. If they actually did master whatever that means, JavaScript, HTML, or CSS, that's really bad. With JavaScript, you need to know like 75% of it and the rest you should be Googling, maybe even 60%. Because if you spend the time to learn 100% of JavaScript and you're barely using that top percent, it's just a bunch of time you're wasting that you can be spending on something more important like making more projects for your portfolio or working on a side job or side hustle or whatever you want. 
just don't don't master a language unless you're trying to become like go and work at Google and you need to like learn every single algorithm by heart and be able to program with your eyes closed. Don't spend time on things you don't need. You do not need to know 100% of JavaScript. Yeah, you need to know how to learn. And yes, you need to know how to read docs. And yes, you need to be able to go and learn what they need you to learn. But do you need to know 100% of something before you walk into the job? Hell no. I went into a job never in my life have I written a C line of C sharp. I got hired for a C sharp job. I showed up on day one, I set up my computer, I opened up everything, and the first thing, the first thing I had to do was write some C sharp, and I've never done it. You're definitely going to have to understand user interface and user experience. It's probably the two things I would value the most out of anything in the front end world. No one cares if your code is sloppy, no one cares if you chose a for loop versus a while loop, nobody cares. All we care about is that your website looks good and then it runs good. That's all that matters. When I take my credit card and I'm ready to buy something on Amazon, I want to make sure that I'm buying on a reputable website. If it's not Amazon or eBay or whatever, I want to make sure I'm buying it on a serious website. I don't want it to look like a 2002 like Google kind of page where it's like no CSS, just HTML and you got all these blue hyperlinks everywhere. I'm not putting my credit card there, let alone my name. If your website runs good and looks good, there's no red flags, you're good to go. For the back end, just like the front end, for the back end, just like the front end, again, no one cares if your code is perfect, no one cares what kind of code you used, what language, it doesn't matter. For the client, it really doesn't matter. But they want to make sure it's good, they want to make sure that when they give you their email and their password and their name and their credit card and their social security and whatever they need to give you, that it's secured and it's safe. Which is why you as a developer have to make sure that your program is safe and that it works well. So with the back end, you're definitely going to have to make sure that you know how to maintain a database, how to create a database, how to change things in the tables if you need to, how to update it, how to, you know, how to do all those things without deleting the whole thing and losing all the information, how to back it up, you know, the basics of programming and learning how to use a database. Then you're going to need to make a server that connects the database to the front end, something kind of like a pipeline. So when a user logs in, check the database. If that user is in the database, tell the user, okay, you're good you can keep going or your password's wrong you can't go yet or whatever you know building that whole system and all that business logic usually goes in the back end so back end is more i would say focused on computer science and using your brain in a systematic way where front end is more creative now that could be total different the, you know you, the two could be the opposites but usually that's how it goes one thing that would be nice for an employer is to, to see that you know how to use your command line yeah, you're gonna have to learn how to use Git and everything, but using your command line for more than just Git would be nice. It's not the most necessary thing. I would say it's necessary just from my experience, but that's up to you. And after those, which are pretty simple ones for both front end and back end, you start to get the things that you can add on to them. So yeah, you know J JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Okay, well, if you can learn some React or Angular Review or whatever, Redux, any of those things that add on to it to make your skill more valuable. If you guys know Dan Locke, he often talks about high value skills and how m multiple high value skills all boost each other up. So my top two would probably be using Git and GitHub properly in a collaborative environment with your teammates. And you know, everyone says you need to have good communication, good verbal skills and all, whatever that crap means. But to be honest, when you and your team are working on a project together, you gotta make sure that you don't work on the same files, that you don't step over each other's toes, because that is one of the worst things that can happen. I remember at my last job, all that would happen is my teammate wouldn't be patient, and I would be working on a feature, and he would wanna add something to it, and he would go and add a feature to the old code, and then I would come in, and want to update the code and all these things would break, all the tests would fail and my code, you know, I'd spend a couple hours on GitHub line by line checking, hey, is was this his code or my code? Which one do I want to keep? Anyone who uses Git rebase and Git merge, you know what I'm talking about, all these huge conflicts. With merge, it's a bit easier, but anyways, that's not the point. All right, so hopefully I didn't bore you out. That's a bit of a long section of the video, but let's talk about the strategy. I know that for you guys, a lot of you guys, this is like, really important you're like oh my god get to the point how what did you do how did you get a job so fast well here it is pretty much every time i learned something new i would make a mini project including everything i've learned up to now so if i learned about loops i'd make a project including loops mini project this is micro projects using node it'd be a console app 
something super simple. You put in a number, you put in a word, and it returns to you that word printed out that number of times. Then I learned about functions. So I started to implement the functions with loops and node in the console. And then I learned about promises. So I used loops, functions, and promises. And I had three apps, one which with each level. So one for loops, one for loops and functions, and one for loops, functions, and promises. And like that, I grew project, I, you know, I built a lot of projects, let's say like a hundred mini projects, and with each one, I learned a bit more. And I kept making these mistakes. So on the loop project, I made a bunch of mistakes. When I, when I came to the second project where it was functions and loops, I knew what to avoid with loops, but I didn't know with functions what kind of mistakes I would make. And I made those mistakes with the functions, but not with the loops. I got practice with the loops, and then I knew, okay, in the next one, don't make these mistakes with loops, and don't make those mistakes with functions. And I got to the third one, and I didn't make mistakes with loops, I didn't make mistakes with functions, but I did make mistakes with promises. So the next one I knew to fix with the promises, and I kept doing that. And why I do that is because when you work on a two-week project, on something very large, just like when I was making a short film and it was too big, you make a huge project to realize a mistake. Now, if you make little projects to realize those mistakes, it goes much faster. You spend a day, you realize your mistake, and you move on to another project, and it's fun, it's refreshing, you get to change the topic all the time, whereas making a two-week project gets pretty boring when you're learning because you, you know, you're seeing the same thing every day, and it's just getting boring, and it's getting repetitive, and you want exciting and different. So the way it would work is I would learn in the morning from, let's say, 8 to 12. I would learn about loops, and I would do practice questions and all that on Code Wars and all those websites. And then around 2 o'clock, let's say, I'm making up random numbers here, but I would go and decide a project idea, and I would make that project that day and finish it that day. And the next day, in the morning, same thing, I would go and learn something else and make a new project implementing what I learned the day before and the day before and re repeat. And everything I learned, so pretty much everything you learned up to now, you would implement that day. And you repeat that process endlessly until you see that you've learned everything that you need and you can apply for a job. Alright, sorry, I got distracted. Um, the dog peed in the house and I lost to where I was ranting, so I'm gonna end the video here. I really hope it was valuable. I'm trying to do a couple things. First thing is if you're new to the channel, subscribe. If you have an opinion on today's video, you liked it, you disliked it, you got an experience you want to talk about, comment below, like the video, you know, all these things help me get into the algorithm and help me make more videos for you. Now, once you've done those, get off your computer, get onto your whatever you got to do and go get shit done. Be productive. I'm going to see you in tomorrow's video.